Shalom, brothers and sisters. All honor and great glory goes to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, in the name of Yahusha HaMashiach. Brothers and sisters, we are doing a video series entitled The Messiah in the Old Testament. This is part two of that installment. And this is to refresh those who already know and understand and to add to your knowledge base and understanding of things you may not knew or understood that was in there. Maybe you didn't see it as you read across these different things that prove the Messiah in the Old Testament, son of the Most High Yahweh, not of man, but of himself from on high brothers and sisters and because of lack of knowledge and lack of understanding there are many wolves on here deceiving the lost sheep of the house of Yashara and many of the righteous are becoming unrighteous through this doctrine because of lack of understanding see the most high indeed does stand alone there is no one else beside him there's no one else besides him that can create a heaven an earth angels and people in a system that we live in there is no self, no other self-existent one out there but him that's what that means. But his word and his Holy Spirit was always a part of him and with him, which he can use as his desire, brothers and sisters. Just as he uses holy angels as his voice, as his hands, as his actions. In heaven and on earth, he uses his word as his voice. And as his hands, as his action. And he made the word flesh. That we may have a way to return back unto him. A way out of sin and death. By the blood of a chosen one that was chosen before time itself. Before we was as in existence. Before heaven and earth was as a, was in existence. He was already there, already chosen to do what he was going to do. And he became a stumbling block to many on this earth. And today we see a lot of Hebrews fallen, fallen, brothers and sisters. Why? Because of lack of faith, lack of study with the right people, and lack of understanding. And so they twist scriptures to their own destruction. And they are taking part in the great delusion that the Most High is turning them over to, as spoken of in Second Thessalonians. But brothers and sisters, let me just recap what we read in the first part. So, the kingdom over Yasharal was given to David forever even to him and to his sons and to his sons by a covenant of salt so what was promised to david rose right over right down the line through all the sons of david not through ephraim and the northern kingdom which rebelled against the father in his holy way but through david and all of his sons and King Ahaz himself was given, remember, he's one of the sons of David now. He was given a prophecy. During the time the northern kingdom and Syria was coming against Judah or plotting, they was plotting and was confederate to come against Judah and destroy Judah, right? And at that time, the Most High said, I'm going to give you a sign. Behold. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son in. This is what was given through the prophet Isaiah to tell us, which was given to Ahaz. 
So he would eat of this holy word and choose the good rather than the evil. And before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land that thou abhorrest shall be forsaken both of her kings. So the northern and southern kingdom would not have kings at the time this child would be born. And we know other prophecies say that this child would come out of the loins of King David. If you read just a little bit above this here, Ahaz was given a prophecy for the kings or the sons of David. It was for Ahaz and the house of David. For them to pay attention to that, for them to understand that one would come out of their loins, out of the king's loins. And right here, King David himself knows that there's someone else he's calling master sitting at the right hand of the father. Now, the Most High gave him the glory as in Daniel 7 and 9 spoke. It's the Most High that gave him the glory of dominion and glory in the kingdom and set this son of man on his, on his right hand side. It's the Most High that chose this. And he also made him a priest, not just a king, but a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And his name would be called Yahweh, our righteousness. And he did come in many names of the Most High. Brothers and sisters. And it's all here. Take your time and read these and recap over them. Even the Most High promised that he would raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, like unto Moses. Unto him you shall listen. So they're all expecting someone to come, even the Pharisees in the time of Hamashiach knew that this prophecy existed and they didn't believe it was him. They knew that there was someone coming from the loins of King David, a great one to be a king. They wasn't ready to give up their position and place and their prestige and honor and everything else that came with their package of being a Pharisees in that day. So they rebelled against this. Though the prophecies was there because even when John walked, they was like, are you the one to come? John, are you the one? That means that they knew that the one didn't even come yet before John. So this one, they was looking at John like, are you the one? First they was like, are you Elijah? No, are you the one then? If you're not him, are you him? So back in the day, all of Zion knew of this prophecy and understood it. We're just waking up. But we're attaching ourselves to men who can't even teach right. Who is unlearned. And is deceiving you out of your minds. So, let me go to here where it says, And David, my servant, shall be king over them. They're taking this and just looking at just the King David himself. They're forgetting about the rest of the prophecy said King David and his sons. So they can make this new kill doctrine for Zion. There's many kill doctrines out there that's killing us. This is a kill doctrine right here. Just like um, the Holy Spirit is Mother Earth is a kill doctrine for you. If you believe that. It's a kill you doctrine. The Messiah, Yahusha was just a prophet, is a kill doctrine. And you're going to see why it's a kill doctrine. Because without him, you have nothing. We're going to read this in the book of Enoch. Which is going to bear witness to everything written in the Old Testament concerning the chosen one from the Most High. So just like right here, it says, And thy 
and they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob my servant. So just as it says, Jacob my servant, you know it's not just talking about the one person. It's unto Jacob and his sons and his children after him and throughout the whole lineage. The promises from Abraham that went to Isaac, that went to Jacob, flows through Jacob to his 12 sons, to all their sons. And we know and understand this, but we didn't have this understanding what it meant right here about David, my servant, because this sounds contradictory to the other scriptures, doesn't it? Until you get a fuller understanding of this here. Once you get a full understanding of the kingdom was over Yahshua was given to David and his sons, then you can start understanding all the rest of these scriptures that talk about this one that's coming. You'll start to put it together, brothers and sisters. So I hope that y'all took your time, press pause and read this here as I scroll down. To, to get familiar with this here. And we're going to move into the book of Enoch. And we're going to do some reading together. But So, so y'all stick it out with me. So just to, just to state this again. Where it says. David my servant shall be king over them. Or even down here. Which says, and my servant David shall be their prince forever. You must include here little, there little, line upon line, precept upon precept, and get a fuller understanding of what this is saying here. You can't just run with, with this singularity thing right here. You have to go with what the Most High said first, not just what men are telling you, singularity. They're doing the singularity in the flesh, while the Most High said something different. Than what they're saying. What they're telling you. So who is this. One coming out of David Lawrence. That would be the prince forever. Who would be a shepherd forever. Who will be a king and a priest forever. And he will be over all the kings and priests of Yasharal. We are becoming kings and priests as well. We who are raised up in him become as him. Y'all understand this is a brotherhood that is being raised up, a sisterhood. There is a only begotten from above and then there is his chosen from down here on the earth. But the one that was from above is the one that was to come to be the perfect sacrifice to save his chosen from down here on in the flesh to bring us back into the spirit because this one had to come and be of the spirit in order to do this and to bring us back into the most high even more glorious than the first Adam even more glorious than the first Adam so this one had to come restore the kingdoms to uh, back to the Most High, which the Most High imparted to Adam the kingship and dominion and glory over the whole earth. And this one came to restore all that. But he had to be born into the lineage and come in the flesh to do this, to walk that perfect walk, to be a perfect sacrifice acceptable before the Most High. No blood of bulls and goats can get, get the job done, brothers and sisters. No lambs, no. You have to have the sacrifice. You have to have it to cover sin and death. It's the only thing that will. So let's go to the book of Enoch and let's get some more understanding of things that were written for your understanding and let's equip ourselves and edify ourselves and add more knowledge to our base so we can have more 
uh, weapons or sword, swordsmanship against our any enemies out there or even more swordsmanship to those who are lost and don't understand brothers and sisters so right here we're going to start with uh, the book in uh, chapter 45 the second parable okay this is about those who deny the name of the dwelling of the holy ones and of Yahweh of spirits they will not ascend into heaven nor will they come upon the earth such will be the lot of the sinners who deny the name of Yahweh of spirits who will thus be kept for the day of affliction and distress on that day the chosen one will sit on the throne of glory and will choose their works let me stop for just a minute. No, let me just finish reading this. And their resting places will be without number. And their spirits within them will grow strong when they see my chosen one. And those who appeal to my holy and glorious name. Now, let me go back here. Let's go to Daniel. Where Daniel saw one like unto the son of man. And they brought him before the Most High, who was the Ancient of Days. And what did the Most High give him? This particular Son of Man, this Chosen One? He, he was given dominion, glory, a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages. Y'all hear that? That all people and all nations and all languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. So the Most High gave him the kingdom. Not that the Most High isn't our great king. We're gonna we're gonna hear that. Yeah, he's still our great king. He is still standing alone forever. Before he created anyone else, it was him. None standing next to him, no other high power like himself sitting there, fixing to make their heaven and their earth somewhere separate from him with people and angels and stuff. But we all come from him. We are all in all, all a part of him. Even Hamashiach. There is no separation there. There is just him and his creations. Brothers and sisters. Many just tripping up on this, man. And it's real simple. The answer to everything is real simple. And it's right before our faces. But many is just blinded. And they can't see. They, they cannot see that the Most High's spoken word was a part of him made flesh. And called son of Yah. They can't see or understand that Mary could be overshadowed by the Most High. And the power of the Most High can have his son born into the lineage of King David. They can't even understand that. But they believe that Adam was made out of dirt. And Eve was made out of a rib taken out of Adam. They can believe that powerful, powerful, um. Uh, Wonder, but they can't believe this wonder. Hamashiach is a strong stumbling block for, for the world. Brothers and sisters, just as Paul has become a stumbling block and many cannot understand certain things that are right there in their faces that they haven't figured out yet, but they're quickly leaping and jumping by hoops and bounds to go against the Father. And his prophets, whom even Peter called beloved and counseled with him, and had the Spirit of the Most High upon him, the Holy Spirit. You think Paul, Peter couldn't discern Paul being an evil spirit? Wicked and there would be a book about how Peter corrected Paul 
if that was the case. But it's just men standing up in their wickedness and lack of understanding and choosing to try to teach you when they wasn't even chosen to do so. So other spirits come into them. And that's what you see with Hamashiach today. There's other spirits with these many pastors and preachers and uh, family uh, um, type well, husband and wife teams as well and families that are all leading you astray and organizations all on here. It's, it's, it's a shame what's happening, but it has to happen. The wheat must be separated from the tares and I don't want y'all to end up like them, brothers and sisters. So I'm going to part the knowledge and wisdom the Most High has given me to understand to all the elect because this channel is for the elect. For the few, not the many. Some of y'all know that by now. But I wanted to just cover that real quickly. Because it's not us who chose this one. Though they're acting like they're the one who has to decide whether this one is the chosen one or not. It ain't, you don't have a choice. That's not your choice. You have a choice to accept them and accept what the Most High has given you to accept. That's your choice. But you don't have a choice whether that one is his son come from on high. His chosen one, his elect one. That's not your choice. Right here it says... Verse 4, and on that day I will cause my chosen one to dwell among them, and I will transform heaven and make it an eternal blessing and light. So, he said he's going to cause his chosen one to dwell among us. That means he came from where? He came from somewhere. He came from above, brothers and sisters, to dwell among us. And I will transform the dry ground and make it a blessing, and I will cause my chosen ones. Now he's talking about his chosen ones, which is us, of the house of Abraham, of the house of Isaac, of the house of Jacob of the house of the twelve tribes, the house of Zion, his chosen ones, and all who live in the land who follow him, and all those who are living outside the land that follow him faithfully. That's his chosen ones, his righteous, his holy, to dwell upon it. But those who commit sin and evil will not tread upon it. For I have seen and have satisfied with peace my righteous ones and have placed them in front of me. But for the sinners my judgment draws near so that I may destroy them from the face of the earth. And there I saw one who had a head of days and his head was white like wool. And with him there was another whose face was had, face had the appearance of a man and his face was full of grace like one of the holy angels. And I asked one of the holy angels who went with me and showed me all the secrets about that son of man, who he was and from where he was and why he went with the head of days. And he answered me and said to me, this is the son of man who has righteousness and with whom righteousness dwells. He will reveal all the treasures of that which is secret for Yahweh of spirits has chosen him. And through uprightness his lot has surpassed all others in front of Yahweh's spirits forever. So his lot has surpassed all others. And I read this in Psalms uh, for, uh, I think 45 where it bears witness to that. Let me go get it. This is Psalms 45 and 7. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore, Yah, thy Almighty, 
have anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. So y'all going to find more scripture that testify about Hamashiach within the Psalms of David. The songs of David. And other ones on here that, that, that wrote some of these Psalms. Like Asaph. But this is who it's talking about. And he's been anointed. With the oil gladness above thy fellows. Let's go back over here. For Yahweh of spirits has chosen him. And through uprightness his lot. Has surpassed all others. This isn't talking about King David. And right here. This is not talking about King David either. He wasn't above Enoch. Enoch was taken for his righteousness. King David died in the grave. He sinned a horrible sin. Made sure that Hittite got killed so he can take Bathsheba. And he also had a child while he was still married. Committing adultery. And y'all turning him into the. The clean savior. There is something wrong going in Zion. Let's read on. And this son of man. Who you have seen. Will rouse the kings and the powerful from their resting places. And the strong from their thrones and will loose the reins of the strong and will break the teeth of the sinners. And he will cast down the kings from their thrones and from their kingdoms. For they do not exalt him and do not praise him and do not humbly acknowledge from where their kingdom was given to them. This goes back to Daniel chapters 7, brothers and sisters. The Most High gave him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all nations should serve him. This is the Most High's doing, not yours. The Most High going to get all his glory. I mean, everything is going to pass through all of us back to himself and from him to us. All in all, it's going to work through just like righteousness and wisdom work through us and the Holy Spirit work through us all. As one. And he will cast down the faces of the strong. And shame will fill them. And darkness will be their dwelling. And worms will be their resting place. Y'all see the ones. That are denying the heavenly father's salvation. The way he wanted it. To come to us. The way he designed it. That we may have faith in it. They will have their dwelling place with the worms. And shame will cast. Will be cast over their faces. And they will have no hope arising from their resting places. For they do not exalt the name of Yahweh of spirits. And these are they who judge the stars of heaven and raise their hands against the Most High and trample upon the dry ground and dwell upon it. Aren't they tearing up the earth? Trampling upon it, taking all the resources and just tearing up the earth and destroying it. They are the destroyers. And all their deeds show inequity. All their deeds show sin. Every end result of them is sin. Because their end result is to live as deities on earth without the Most High. And be as Him. Creators. 
creating there. That's why they're changing all the fruits and vegetables and animals. They're following after their deity that they serve who wants to recreate everything in his image. Not in the most highs, but in the image of the beast. And they are walking in it right now and serving him right now in the image of the beast all over the world. And their power rests on their riches. And they and the beast doesn't want you to know or understand about this son of man that came from above. That was prophesied to come to save and have salvation in his hand, in his arms. The beast wants you to take, wants to take that from you. By twisting knowledge of good and evil. And their faith is in their deities that they have made with their hands. And they deny the name of Yahweh's spirits. And they will be driven from the houses of the congregation and of the faithful who depend on the name of Yahweh's spirits. And in those days, the prayers of the righteous and the blood of the righteous will have ascended from the earth in front of Yahweh's spirits. In these days, the holy ones who live in heaven above will unite with the with one voice and supplicate and pray and praise and give thanks and bless in the name of Yahweh's spirits because of the blood of the righteous that has been poured out and because of the prayer of the righteous so that it may not cease in front of Yahweh's spirits so that justice might be done to them and that their patience may not have to last forever. And in those days, I saw the head of days sit down on the throne of his glory. And the books of the living were opened in front of him. And all his hosts which dwell in the heavens above. And his council were standing in front of him. And the hearts of the holy ones were full of joy that the number of the righteous had been reached. And the prayer of the righteous had been heard. And the blood of the righteous had not been required in front of the Yahweh of spirits. And in that place, I saw an inexhaustible spring of righteousness. And many springs of wisdom surrounded it. And all the thirsty drank from them and were filled with wisdom. And their dwelling was with the righteous and the holy and the chosen. So all of you sitting around here saying wisdom is some separate female entity of its own self. I even heard one brother on YouTube, some of y'all may be subscribed to him, he called wisdom mother of heaven, which is it's not written anywhere to suggest or say such a thing. But many don't understand the parable of why wisdom was called her. But right here you see wisdom is, 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 is a part of the Most High. It's part of his image. It's part of his essence. It's part of his holiness. His wisdom is being poured out like water. And we shall drink from the wells of wisdom. It's an inexhaustible spring of righteousness. Inexhaustible spring. And many springs of wisdom surrounded and all the thirsty drank from them and were filled with wisdom. And their dwelling was with the righteous and the holy and the chosen. Hallelujah. And at that hour that son of man was named in the presence of Yahweh's spirits. And his name brought to the head of days. Over and over, you're going to see this son of man. Remember in Daniel, it said he was brought before the Most High. And this here bears witness to that. And at that hour, that son of man was named in the presence of Yahweh's spirits. And his name brought to the head of days. Who is the Ancient of Days? Even before the sun and the constellations were created... Before the stars of heaven were made, his name was named in front of Yahweh's spirits. He was there in the beginning. He was a part of the Most High. Though he can act separate of the will of the Most High, he's still a part of the Most High. The same as us, though we can act separate 
of the will of the Most High, we're still a part of him. Where is that understanding? That's foundational understanding right there, brothers and sisters. All come from him. All is a part of him. You must apply that to your understanding and knowledge base to other scriptures as you read in them. The foundation of your faith must be applied to these scriptures as you read. And that's how you understand the book of Enoch and know that it was and is a part of what we should be reading from on high, from the Father. He will be a staff to the righteous and the holy so that they may lean on him and not fall. Y'all remember when Moses lifted up the staff with that serpent on it so that those snakes could stop biting them? And by faith they, they, they listened. They, it was the faith that saved them. They believed what Moses said. They believe what the Father said through Moses. Because the Father works through people. Y'all know that. He works through holy angels. So, they believed the Father and they looked on that staff. And the wrath was stayed. The wrath was stopped. It says here, He will be a staff to the righteous and the holy so that they may lean on him and not fall and he will be the light of the nations and he will be the hope of those who grieve in their hearts he was the hope from the very beginning the hope of Adam the hope of Eve even Adam and Eve understood that one would come and redeem them from their transgression. For before Adam was made, the whole plan was already well thought out and planned by the Most High. It's already done. Everything was completed and done before the creation. All those who dwell upon the dry ground will fall down and worship in front of him. That goes right back to Daniel. Bearing witness in, in, in other books, Isaiah as well, and Jeremiah, and Ezekiel as well. And they will bless and praise, and also uh, uh, Zechariah. And they will bless and praise and celebrate with songs. They will celebrate with songs, brothers and sisters. In the name of, Yah, of Yahweh of Spirits. And because of this, he was chosen and hidden in front of him before the world was created and forever. See, this part, they won't believe. They won't believe it because of lack of faith. And they will trash this book, Book of Enoch, even though the Bible says, read the Book of Enoch. They're going to use every excuse. Some are saying it's the, it's the Enoch from Cain, Cain's lineage. You know, it was Cain and Abel. And Cain had some sons, and one of his sons was called Enoch. They're saying this book was written, this holy book was written of, of that wicked one. This is how wicked and evil they are. And some people falling for it and believing it. And they're also saying, well, well, this book was written by the Gentiles. You, you mean the Most High can't use his creation to, to do his will? It doesn't mean that he has chosen them to be his people and all these other things. No, he, he could still use them to translate. Look what he did with Nebuchadnezzar. You think Nebuchadnezzar went, is at the gates of heaven right now or in the paradise right now? He worshipped other idols, but he was still the servant of the Most High. And he was given the kingdom by the Most High. That's right. The Most High appointed kings. It wasn't just Hamashiach appointed kings or King David and the sons at them. He appointed other kings too. Here a little, there a little. Draw in your understanding and see the blueprint of the Most High laid out before us, brothers and sisters.
before the world was created, he was chosen. But the wisdom of Yahweh's spirits has revealed him to the holy and the righteous. So when y'all come across these videos where people are saying that the Messiah didn't exist, he's just a prophet, or the New Testament is fake, written by Romans, y'all need to know that they're not the righteous and they're not the holy. For they are against the plan of the Most High. You need to run away. I don't care how good they sound. And especially the ones that are saying don't keep the commandments. Or the commandments are done away with. Though they all pick up the book and read it. They have eyes that cannot see or hear. And though they can use the wisdom of their of the world to make things sound good and entertaining on, on their pulpits and in their videos. They can make it sound very good to your ears. Sweet. And your ears will be tickled and you'll, you'll think that they are, they say of a right thing. That's why we had to put all the teachers of Catholicism, Christianity, all the Protestants, the Jewish people all away. Even the nation of Islam, who's, who is now creating Hebrew law. You need to put all the sayings and everything concerning them and all the people that come from them away, including Martin Luther King, including Malcolm X. All their sayings, all their teachers need to be trashed. None of them was with the Most High. Marcus Garvey. Y'all thinking that all the civil rights and all the fight that we had to free ourselves was right before the Most High. You ain't free yet. You ain't noticed that. All the fight you put in all these years for freedom, for this, that, and the other, and thinking the white man was supposed to free us back in 1800s of the Civil War, you ain't free yet. You ain't never been freed. You ain't, you ain't noticed that the Most High is not Letting up until he's ready to free us. Until he say so. You ain't never been free. Your mind was. Was was uh, lured to that deception. Of freedom. But you endured slavery. Until this day. And they even incorporated their own. Into slavery today. You're not free brothers and sisters. It's an illusion of freedom. The Most High is our Savior. He is our redeemer. He's the only one that could set us free. Not no HR 16, uh, 1242. I don't know what that 16, uh, 400 year bill was. 1619, well, whatever. The 400 year bill that Trump put out there to acknowledge the 400 years of, that we've been in this country. And people fell for that instantly. Hook, line, and sinker. He, Hasha Tan came right on time to fortify that 1619 to 2019 date setting, which was a lie. And people to this day still can't wake up and see that either. These are wicked ones on here. Deceiving and being deceived, brothers and sisters. You have to put them away or you're going to fall for all these winds of doctrines that they're putting out there. And and it's chewing the meat, spit out the bone doctrine. Y'all need to put that away too because that's not how the Most High operates. He doesn't operate, oh, I'm going to learn this, that from him. And then, oh, I'm going to spit out the bones. I know that ain't real, that ain't true. But he's speaking good on this area. An example is Big Judah. I've been told y'all to get away from that man and y'all some of y'all still there with him call yourself chewing on meat spitting out the mother bones he's speaking you are being led to more destruction brothers and sisters I'm making part two and a half so y'all go to part two and a half and I'm going to finish reading all this glorious evidence from the most high for us to believe in. I'm going to start right here. And if anything, y'all need to 
really tighten up and listen and read along and get even a deeper grip on your faith so when you see these wicked ones coming at you you'll be able to fight them off with the real sword of the spirit not their fake man-made sword of of uh earth earth elements down here but you have a strong eternal spirit that you're i mean eternal sword that you'll be fighting with from on high given to you to fight with this sword will not break it will not fade away it will not rust it will not rot it's an everlasting sword but the sword that they're fighting with down here will melt before the glory of the most high become putty in their hands and be broken as they try to swing that sword against the real sword of the spirit and some of us really believe that these people are real really ones from the most high you got husband and wife's teams pushing a lot of wickedness and many of Zion is falling for it and leaving the faith and leaving the truth and leaving the most high by leaving his chosen one and not listening to the chosen one who is our high priest who is speaking to us on behalf of the most high as all the high priests of Aaron spoke on behalf of the most high as all his prophets spoke on behalf of the most high this one has come and he is a priest forever and this is the one you need to listen to forever that he has chosen to come so y'all go to part two and a half Shalom.